All right, now, let's um, take the conversation um, further now. Uh, we turn our attention to energy prices uh, still, even though we talked a bit about energy prices. What are the prospects for um, poverty alleviation? And, you know, at this time, I did speak about uh, windfall taxes on who's profiting from, you know, higher prices, but we're going to find out who's really profiting, uh, really. But joining us now is uh, Mr. Nick Agula, is a uh, uh, energy expert and a group head citizens uh, charity joining me from our Buja studio. Great to have you on the show. Good afternoon, Ladi. How are you doing? Great to have you. So um, what we're seeing, I, I know you're, you're a big player there when it comes to the energy market, but we're seeing prices, a big headache right now for Nigerians, talking about energy prices, you know, eating deep into disposable income. Is there any way this could have been avoided? Uh, exactly. There are many ways that this could have been avoided. Uh, if we had got our refineries working, our four refineries working, uh, we could be buying uh, gasoline, I mean petrol, or premium motor spirit, as we call it in Nigeria, at cheaper rates than we have now. If we got uh, electricity working, then a lot of the petrol and diesel that is going into generators would have been saved, and that would have meant uh, we we'll have, we'll have more supply of products at cheaper rates. If uh, we invested and opened up the space for new energy, uh, the sunshine that is out there, the wind, and the water bodies that we have in Nigeria, and are generating uh, electricity at cheaper rates, uh, we, we will not be having this kind of electricity tariff that we have now. So on all counts, uh, we could do better, and it's not late. It's time for government to begin to put the capex in these projects. And I mean, if government does not have the money to do it, and they can just open the space, just like they open the space in telecoms, and we see the growth that is happening in that sector. That's what we need in the downstream petroleum sector, in the power, and uh, in the steel plant, and even in agriculture. And definitely, you know, with um, the latest rate hike, um, is, a, is a high um, interest rate uh, environment with borrowing costs, you know, even going higher. Do you see this also, you know, impacting the um, energy market at this point, which will tilt prices even higher? Yeah, of course, it's going to impact because uh, when you hike rates, then the cost of borrowing goes up and investors will find it more difficult to you know, perform their analysis and come up with positive MPVs, net present values for projects. So you, you find out that project funding is impacted and even funding for operations is impacted. And I mean, I, I, I read the statement by the Monetary Policy Committee and the committee came to a decision point where they said, should we hike rates to help uh, pricing, that is the inflation, or should we look at output growth? And the committee voted for fighting inflation at the expense of output growth. And you know that we cannot continue fighting inflation at the expense of output growth. Nigeria really needs to grow. Our economy needs double-digit growth so that uh, inflation itself can be cured with growth. It's better cured with growth because like the MPC said, uh, food inflation has come down. And why? Because the farmers are putting in more food into the market. You know, so that is a better cure for inflation, trying to get uh, output, to, to increase output. But again, I understand the difficulty or the challenge that the, the, the central bank or the monetary policy committee or the central bank has. Because the, the fiscal authorities, the ones who are supposed to do the hard work and grow the economy, they are not doing their job. And so the CBN thinks that, oh, uh, they, they, they can't just let it slide, they have to do something. But unfortunately, I think they are giving too much painkillers to the patient. And uh, the patient is now struggling and uh, on the deathbed, actually. And definitely, we know at the end of the year is upon us, um, Christmas is coming you know, at this point. What, what do you think can be done in the short term to cushion you know, the impact of energy prices, rising energy prices on Nigerians? Well, the other uh, aspect that I wanted to talk about is that if you go to other climes, like in the UK, US, and all of those places, the, the, there is the voluntary sector that comes in, especially 
uh, using the lottery system. You have uh, even governments raising a lot of money and charities raising a lot of money to come in to support and help plug loopholes where government is not covering up properly. And that is why you have things like uh, food banks, you know, then you have, uh, you know, recreational, educational programs. You, you have all sorts of community help. You will discover that a lot of the monies that charities are even sending to Nigeria are coming from the lottery system. And the Nigerian lottery system hasn't been developed to that point because like in the U.S., um, they raised about $100 billion through the lottery system. And the lottery system is owned by the states. So the state governments are the ones that own it. You know, in, in the U.K., the national lottery is owned by the government. It's, it's the government that owns it. And that is one sector that Nigeria needs to start to consider. Already, we have the structures in place, like we have the National Lottery Regulatory Commission, and there are some states that already have a lottery board, and uh, it, is a, it is an area where citizens come in with very little money, pull it together, and the money is put into development projects and then helps citizens overcome situations like the hardship that we have in Nigeria now. And when it comes to, you know, channeling, you know, most of these um, funds, you know, to alleviate the um, sufferings, you know, at this point, what, what kind of sectors do you think should be priority, you know, at this time? I would say that agriculture should be a priority. For me, I'm not very comfortable with the government's approach of importing food uh, because uh, this government came into power um, probably about 15 months ago. Uh, or thereabout, and uh, if they had uh, gone ahead to support the agricultural sector, and we did a lot of land clearing and then planting uh, with machines, uh, we would have done the harvest already, you know, because uh, there are crops like rice and all of that that can be harvested within a few months when you plant them. So I would expect that uh, the government should open up that space, and even if we're looking at uh, raising money through the lottery system, that is where money should be invested because, you see, agriculture provides the best economic uh, out outcome for Nigeria because not only will it uh, assure food sufficiency at cheaper rates, it will also create a lot of jobs, you know. And then, of course, uh, if we attain food sufficiency, we can start exporting the food and then uh, it will not help the foreign exchange uh, rate as well because it will turn around things. Instead of us chasing dollars, we'll be making dollars from our food export. So we, we, we have everything set up. We have a good climate, we have a sufficient amount of rainfall, we have water bodies all over the country for uh, irrigation and all of that, and then we have the manpower. So for me, that is a sector that is just not being explored, and we are also just fizzed with crude oil. And uh, agriculture is just the best game for us. Right. So, you know, at this time we have um, a refinery, you know, from the private sector. And um, definitely we've seen uh, a lot of people, you know, clamor for our other refineries to actually come on stream. But um, at this stage, what do you think is the right move, you know, right now? Because, you know, definitely pricing has become a problem, um, pricing um, the uh, products coming out from the Dangote refinery. So what do you think should be the next move? You know, right now, so that, you know, 2025, Nigerians can get some kind of soccer. So the, 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 the whole thing about the pricing of the Dangote refinery uh, petroleum products, for me, is, is uh, in fact, I, I, there was a statement that came up from the presidency, was it yesterday, where they said the president does not want to, the, or the presidency does not want to get involved in the pricing between Dangote refineries, a private sector, uh, company and the NMPCL, which is also um, uh, you know limited, uh, even though owned by the government, and I, th I thought that was not right. Uh, the NMPCL has gone to sit between Dangote Refinery and Nigerians, and I don't think that is a market. That is not an efficient market. A market that actually determines prices for consumers to have a fair deal is a market that is competitive. And uh, at the NMPCL, uh, the, 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 the presidency just needs to tell the NMPCL to move away to allow Dangote to interact with Nigerians and other producers and importers of petroleum products so that Nigerians can get the best pricing. How are we going to get out of this for 2025? 
Since the current government came into power, they have been embarking on policies that they call reforms. I doubt if they are reforms, but if you look at them, number one, they took away fuel subsidy. Uh, that's not a reform. The reform will be a total unbundling of the downstream sector and dealing with the four uh, NMPC refineries and opening up the space for more investments and also into new energy sources. That will be a reform. They, you know, are hiking interest rates. That's not a reform on itself. Uh, we, we need to grow the output for the economy at 3% growth. That's rather too small. Nigeria has potential for double-digit growth, and that's what a reform we achieve for us. And they hiked electricity uh, tariffs. For me, that's not a reform. A reform would be to unbundle the electricity sector, bring in investment the way we did in telecoms, and grow output because the government came in when the uh, output was three to 4,000 megawatts and the output is still three to 4,000 megawatts. Why would, why should not expect the government to increase the output to say 10,000 megawatts within 15 months? We are not seeing the projects that are putting in the capex so that in three years time, we're going to see the output. So these are the areas of reform. When you reform a, a, a sector, you make the sector better more efficient, open it up to investment, and then get these goods and services provided for Nigerians at far cheaper rates and create jobs and, and export to end the, the dollars. All right. Thank you so much. Always great um, having your perspective, Mr. Nick uh, Goulet, energy expert and group head uh, Citizens Charity. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ladi, and thank you to our viewers.